beautiful people. Welcome back to another episode of Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. We bring you phenomenal experts from around the country and around the world. And this episode is no different. I am so excited because we have the phenomenal, the incomparable. You better put some respect on her name because she's always going to stand on business and more. Mrs. Brandy Wood Smith, by way of Houston, Texas, baby, okay? And she is the visionary of Child Care Millionaires, Imagine Me Academy, multiple businesses on top of billion businesses. And I know I said billions because I'll take it. The, the B <laughs> stands for billions in Brandy Wood Smith. And I'm super excited she came yeah. to hang out with us today. How you feeling? How you doing today? I feel real good. It's an honor. I love the community. So hopefully, you know, your brand's a big deal out there. Don't be slipping and having low confidence because we got work to do. We got work to do. And there's, <laughs> and there's money to make, right? This lady also, the B in Brandy also stands for seeing you at the bank. Yes. So before you became this woman who's just like a powerhouse, we see you on social media. You just take stages in the world by storm. But who is Brandy Wood Smith? When she's not on social media, when she's not on the stages, who's the real Brandy? I mean, the real Brandy is on stage, but the real Brandy also has a whole, a huge family. We have six kids and three grandbabies, parents, cousins, sisters, and brothers. I think I'm just a matriarch in our family. Like, um, I, I can't wait till I'm old enough to be big mama. I'm going to go ahead and embrace that thing. Give me a few moo-moos. Now, they may have like some Swarovski crystals on them or something. They're going to be fabulous. <laughs> They're going to be fabulous. But more than anything, I'm big on family and community. So underneath everything I do is really about how can I build my family and how can I build my community? And I happen to do that through business. How did you get started in business? Like, where did this idea come from? Because people will see your story right now and they don't see where it started. And this is just the middle for you. That's just the reality. This is we're seeing the middle. But where did this start? Well, I came from a family of entrepreneurs. So I think um, seeing people kind of blaze their own trail was not foreign to me, but it actually started when I was in third grade. This is when my first business started. I used to sell blow pops on the bus. And when I figured out I could take my dollar allowance, buy a bag of blow pops and flip that thing. It was 22 blow pops in the bag, flip that thing and make me about $5. I was like, I could do this all day. And so that's when I really realized that if I wanted my own money, you know, I had to make it. And then just as I went through life, it, that entrepreneur call always called me back. Even when I was in the classroom, when I was a principal, I always felt like there was something more I should be doing to control my own wealth. And one of the ways that you have been able to accumulate wealth and help other people was through daycares. Absolutely. Every day on the Internet, my my friends, because we are a particular age, they talk about daycare. Right. And, and the cost of daycare. And all I think of uh, is Brandy uh, Wood Smith and <laughs> how Shade needs to go get herself a daycare. So how did you get into this industry? So first of all, for all y'all who think we charge too much, we mm -hmm. really don't. I am mean, just That's think about how saying. long we have the kids. But it started for me really having a passion for education. But there is like this black hole in education, mm -hmm. to be honest. And there is such a big gap with our black, black and brown children and how they were performing in the school. And it always stemmed back really to one thing. And that was their ability to read. If they couldn't read, they acted out in class. If they couldn't read, they couldn't decode. Even in the classes that they love, like science or, you know, or math, because they really couldn't understand what they were reading. And then I can remember I was an administrator at this time, sitting in a boardroom and hearing them talk about these kids like they were not humans, like they were just numbers on a paper. And most of you know about the preschool to prison pipeline. It was just, I felt like all these things were stacked against the children that I love. And I felt like I needed to do something. It took me too long to act upon it. So don't be like me. It took me seven years to open my first school before I had the idea because I was wanting to hold on to that comfort of a job. But I'm so happy I finally stepped out. And when you took this leap of faith, what happened? Tell us a little bit more. <laughs> seven years. It took seven years, but once you got started, you ain't been stopping. And I don't want to lie. I was kind of pushed after seven years. I had gotten a really high paying job at a private school and they had decided they needed to cut the budget mm -hmm. about a year in. And I was one of the highest salaries. They offered me like a lesser contract position or 
a small payment, like a severance. And I was like, you know what? I might as well choose myself. I keep putting my future in other people's hands. So literally after going through, it it was a sad time. I can't talk about it sad now because like, and now I understand it was a stepping stone in my journey. That was one of the things that pushed me into my purpose. So after I left, we opened in seven weeks. Mm-hmm. Now I could have cashed in at seven weeks, six years earlier, but literally because I was forced to do it, we did it expediently. I love it. So I know part of your brand expanded to opening up multiple centers, but also helping people. And that's how we got connected. Yes. Education, info, product part of your business. Where was this inspiration? Because that was another push too. We talked, you know. Yes. And so what y'all don't know is I stalked her and I was like, you gonna, (laughs) I was like, you gonna work for me? She's like, um, little lady, I don't know who you are, but I saw something in her that was amazing. And what I saw in her was execution, whether it was great, it was okay. But I saw execution and the willingness to try. And most people just don't have that. Mm. But um, I was on stage one day and I used to hold this conference called Millionaires Academy. And it was just about teaching any entrepreneur how they could use their expertise to make money. And I was walking off stage in my cute little shoes. And I heard God say, like, you need to teach people about daycare. And I was like, I don't want to teach people about daycare. I don't want to be known as the daycare lady. I was like, listen, I'm too fly for that. He was like, no, you need to teach people about daycare. So I'm not crazy. He has never failed me. That night I posted on social media, you know, who wants to learn how to open a daycare? And literally, I don't even think it was our words. Within an hour, I had about 300 messages Mm. and people were tagging people. And I was like, okay, Lord, you know better than me. And that's how we actually got started with the idea of really starting to help childcare owners in particular. And how has that idea expanded (laughs) from just saying, I'm going to be obedient and listen to God because that's a sign for somebody who's watching. Yes. For me to where you are today and now. So the first year I really had no help and the only thing we had was like a $12 ebook. And even with that, I made like a thousand, well, about a thousand dollars. And that's a lot for a $12 product. My brain's a big deal. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I have proof of concept. So that was the year I reached out to Sade and I was like, I want to do these things. And we started holding masterclass. We really didn't have any formulated programs to be honest until the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then during the pandemic, my industry went through a turbulent time. I myself went from about 160 to 180 kids on a daily basis to 12 kids Mm. between three buildings. And that was devastating, you know, and we didn't know what we were going to do. So I began to go online every day. We began to talk. We began to raise money to give grants for other childcare owners and We just thought we were doing the work, but we were actually building something really huge. I love it. And tell us about it. Brad, you know, this is your brand's a big deal. Brandy's being modest. I want to talk talk about the movement that you have built from just thoughts in your head. Like it's it's been so I've been behind the scenes and I've watched and I'm just like, how does she do this? And sometimes I'm there to see (laughs) you doing it. These dreams manifest and we're doing it. And I'm just like, how? I know this lady, like, how is this happening? Man, I think people just really wanted to connect with someone real. And mm. I think that's why it's really important to have live events because people can see you online and be like, oh, she can do it because of these set of circumstances. Mm-hmm. No, nah, really, 15 years ago, I was homeless. Like, that's the real, real story. 15 years ago, I was rebuilding my life. I had just went through a really bad divorce and I had to make a decision that I wanted to rebuild. I had to make a decision that I was going to use what I had. I wasn't going to waste my talent because I really do believe that God gives seed to the sore. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you can sow ideas, your sweat mm-hmm. equity. People always think I'm sowing something else. I think he gives his talents and his ideas to executors, right? Mm-hmm. And so as we were building this organization People just wanted integrity. They just wanted solid information. And we went from like having about 100 people in a Facebook group to serving over 20,000, 27,000 centers, you know, on an annual basis. And I'm still amazed. But I think he always gives us fresh ideas. And even though our organization doesn't say child care millionaires Christian organization, we have a very clear avatar. And that's child care owners who love Christ who want to run their business on biblical principles and who believe that it's our birthright to be wealthy. 
That's who we serve. And so because we're clear about who we serve, people are attracted that fit in that category. I love it. And yes, it's it's just a phenomenal community. And I think about it because our back, backgrounds are both in education. Yeah. And one of the things that you talk about, we talk about it from the school to prison pipeline. And you talk about it from the cradle, from it started from their infancy yeah. and how we can really make a difference. So tell, talk a little bit more about that for people that might not be familiar with that phrase. So basically, there were several studies and researches that either track kids to prison, not to college, but to prison. And there were some clear indicators. One was reading scores in third grade. And the other was behaviors. Well, we know if a kid struggles academically, what's to fall behind that is behaviors. But we also know that a teacher's belief in a kid and a kid's confidence in themselves that they can do and be more is one of the hugest cornerstones in their success. So if I were a teacher and she already don't think I can do anything and she's already okay with me not being able to read, the chances of me catching up is slim to none. And research shows that if a kid slips back two years, they are likely to never get on grade level. So if we can help kids earlier, have a great foundation, that's important. Now, the way Child Care Millionaires helps that is I can only open so many centers, right? My ability to impact The children of this world, you know, could be finite based on my time and energy. But if I can help thousands of other people, then our love for children gets to expand through their business and not just my own. So it's really a mission oriented business that was founded for the children. But then we fell in love with the owners. You know, that's kind of really how it happened. I love it. One of the things that Brandy is known for online is her knack for productivity. (laughs) I don't know how she gets it all done. I watch and I'm like, how does she do it? You're a mom. You're, you're a glam mom. Yes. She's a GG. You're a, you're a wife and you're a present wife. You're a present sister, a present mom, a present (laughs) daughter. And you own multiple businesses and you support so many people. I would not be the person I am without her saying, listen, you're going to help me. (laughs) You're going to do it. You're going to take this money. And you're going to take this money (laughs) and you're going to make it happen. And and thank you so much for that. I truly appreciate you. I would not be here without you. I appreciate you. How are you so daggone productive? And how can we take some notes? So, uh, and uh, guys, at the end, I'm going to give you guys a free gift. That way you can dig into this more. I do believe that we have a certain amount of time that God gives us. And we need to use it to the best of our ability. You know, my dad died before he was 40. Mm. And when I say he was super fine and had all these ideas that he would talk about, but he never got to see them come to light. All his potential, you know, went into the grave prematurely. Mm. And I would just sometimes think like, how can I make sure that that doesn't happen? Or how can I make his dreams live through me? And that was kind of the first thing like in college, because he died the week before I went to college. We had his services on a Thursday and I went to school on a Saturday. So I didn't have a lot of time to grieve him. So I threw myself into work. Now, that could have been unhealthy in one way, but the way that it was very healthy is I learned very early on to be disciplined and not to waste time. Now, I do enjoy my time. I enjoy my family, my trips, my sorority sisters. I love all of that. But when it comes to work, I'm going to get it in first. My biggest way is working with my body clock, though. So, you know, we early risers. We be up. We be up. Four o'clock, I'm up and she's responding. It's crazy. Now, y'all don't text her at four o'clock, but our my work clock is different. I'm most productive from about 4.30 to about 10.30. Um, and then I have to take a break because I've done six, more like probably 12 full hours of work the way that I work. And then I take a break in the day to socialize, to do family things. And then at night I go back, we teach our community. But I definitely do take time for myself, but my self-care cannot overshadow what I promised myself I was going to do. And that's just discipline. Mm. So discipline, that's the the, the golden nugget. And she will have a free resource for us. One of the things that I love about Brandy, she is the hostess with the most. She's an MC extraordinaire. And she finds time to grace our stage at the Girl Your Brand's A Big Deal conference. And we're going to say she's going to be there again this year. We're going to make sure. Can you tell us why you love hosting and some of the things that people should just look out for this year? So when I host, I get to put on my teacher hat. 
<laughs> right? So I get to weave ideas together. Um, I get to serve who's ever putting on the conference because they put on the conference because they have a message that they want their audience and their family, their tribe to really hear. So I'm really good at weaving in those messages and making people feel comfortable to get out of their comfort zone, you know. So we try to engage people in the audience. And I think another thing that makes me a really good host is I'm not starstruck, but I like the stars. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Who, who did you like? Who was a star I mean, that struck you a little bit? I've been able to rub elbows with some of the greatest people. I really think, I still think Magic Johnson was my favorite because to look at what he did with his money from the NBA, to me, that's just amazing because back then, you know, NBA players were not making what they make mm -hmm. today. But he really, you know, has a high business acumen. I, I love that. Uh, my daughter's favorite was Issa Rae, you know, and I, have, I love looking at the recording of Issa Rae. I was like, if I can make her laugh, I felt like that that was one of the trophies, you know, on my on my case. But I think everybody has taught me something, you know, that has graced the stages and just getting to hear their style and getting to talk about them. and. Auntie Kathy Hughes, she gave me the business behind stage. Just so getting to meet different people has really been a blessing to me. I love it. And you've had some phenomenal experiences and you create phenomenal experiences <laughs> as an event visionary. If someone's thinking about hosting their event, what are like two or three things that you would love to share with them? After, make sure you understand the budget. Budget! <laughs> the B stands for budget. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that budget can make or break your event. I would say to have a, a real crafted goal. Um, it's not just enough to bring people together and have random speakers, but everybody that hits your stage needs to interweave to hit that goal. You need to know what action you want people to take. I think that's one of the things, or you will lose a lot of money and which won't make you feel good. You won't do it again. The goal of um, an event is, you know, to make sure you break even at least and, you know, build some kind of brand awareness. But hopefully you're going to make a profit, which will allow you to do it again and to really serve your community well. The second thing I would say is you don't have to have big names to have a successful event, but you do have to have good content. Like, and mm -hmm. there are some phenomenal people that may not be nationally known, but they bad. I mean, they cold with it. Find those people and grow with them. I mean, me and Sade have grown together, right? And so when she calls me, I come. When I call her, I come. And having that community that you can grow with, you can grace each other's stages, is way more economically whew, healthy than trying to get a lot of big names that are really not connected to you. And it's just transactional. You want people to be on your stage that you have a relationship with. Relationships matter, and so does that budget. So if you're thinking about hosting your event, listen, you got the hostess, the MC with the most is right here, and make sure you're thinking about your budget. I think that's the that's the biggest thing that yeah. kicks people in the butt. Uh, Brandy, what are some things that you are looking forward to as you begin to expand <sighs> your brand and businesses? So I, I love my centers. They're my anchor business, but that labor of love is kind of taking care of itself. I really look forward into helping entrepreneurs in different ways. One of the biggest ways is we have a really big mission to open a bank. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to say it more often. With more, we are saying it. With the more bank. confidence. The bank is happening. Yes. Yeah, so we're excited that Revive Bank is on the way. We have a name. We have a name. And the reason why we chose that name is not only do we want to help entrepreneurs and particularly black and brown entrepreneurs get equitable financing, but we also want to revive communities. So all of the properties that me and my husband buy is really, really strategic in communities, one, that are urban communities, that are minority communities that need great businesses. So, you know, that's us having the laundromat. We have a salon. We just bought a, a property in College Park and we strategically bought there because we wanted to be a part of something bigger than us. And even as we go and we do developments, we love to buy land um, in those communities because I don't believe we need anybody to revitalize our community. We can regentrify our own communities it's no sense of letting other people come in, buy our land at a bargain, and then sell it back to us mm -hmm. at extreme rates. We need to be able to revitalize our community, keep the you know our community market at a fair level, right? At a fair level, and still make it look nice and presentable, make it be a place where people want to stay there and come back. 
how did you know you wanted to do these things? Like, where did these ideas initiate? Because I know you said you, you've had entrepreneurs in your family, but how did you know you wanted to do the, buy real estate, invest in the ways that you are investing? The idea to say, I got the audacity to say, I'm, I'm building a bank. <laughs> like, where does this come from? Oh, Lord. I think I it's like part by part. Like I said, he gives seed to the sower. I think once I execute cute one idea, it's like, okay, now do this or now do that. Mm. Um, so the tour. So I'm on tour right now. We just had our first tour stop. We we put the tickets out, what, seven days? Less than 10. I know it was less than 10. I think it was seven days <laughs> before the event and the first tour stop sold out. So like they gave me confidence to say, okay, we can do more. But I wouldn't have the confidence to do that if I wasn't showing up. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times the reason why we won't dream bigger is because we're not showing up where we are. Once you literally take care of the first part of the vision, he will expand the vision, expand the vision, expand the vision. And then you'll be further than you ever thought you could be just because you kept taking steps. You know, I really believe that I'm on a long journey, right? Even though I sprint to get things done, I do these 10 day sprints, but I'm on a long journey to success. So that means every time we do something, it gives us confidence to do more. When we bought the first um, strip center, we said, okay, well, we can do this. When we built the first house, okay, we can build a community, you know, and everything gives you confidence to do the next thing. But if you ain't doing nothing, Mm. you have no room to build confidence. So you got an implementation and execution. And this, I, and one thing you said that I hope they got the viewers received was that you didn't have the full vision. You just the money. Oh, oh, (laughs) talk about that part. Or the money. Let's like, talk about that part. I did not have the money to open my first center. My first center was super small. It could only take 19 kids. I had, I really, I had bad credit when I opened my first center. And I did something called the Dream 100. I asked 100 people to give me $100. And we raised about $12,000 and I still didn't have enough money. My sister, who, you know, still supports me to this day, she kind of gave me the last $5,000. Now, I didn't give her her $5,000 a lot of times. So if y'all can let her know that I paid her back. <laughs> I would appreciate it, okay? But she gave me the last $5,000 to get my fire system, which is required in the centers. But that struggle let me know that I could do the impossible because I literally had nothing. I, like nothing when I started this. We grew out of that building in less than six months. We could take 19 kids. When we left that building, we had 35. Now I was riding dirty, but I had two shifts. Like um, when my pre-K program left at 3.30, my after schools were coming in. So when we went into our next building, it was in less than a year, which was 119. Mm. And then when we opened our next center, that center could take 109. And so we begin to add on, add on, add on. And and we had the confidence to do more. And then we moved that into other businesses. But I didn't have the money. I didn't have the experience. But, you know, we got it done. We got it done. So I want to talk to you because some other things about faith and family. Mm -hmm. How has faith fueled the things that you do? Um, It's been a big part for me. Even with the tour, it was like God was saying, like, go out. Mm. Like it's time for you to go out um, because I know my business is also a form of evangelism. Mm. And even though <laughs> Child Care Millionaires is not the church, the church is in us and I bring it where I go. And even call, having the audacity to call it the revive tour, I want to call it the revival. And I was like, OK, girl, pull it back some <laughs> and we could just do the revive us tour. But it really was a revival. But I knew if I didn't do it, that I was going to feel this condemnation. Mm. And as I was going out and we were talking and I seen people begin to cry and say, you know, how they have been praying for a renewal, how they have been praying to have the strength to to keep on and how now they felt encouraged. I kept thinking, what if I wouldn't have went? You know, that could have been 30 people that could have closed their doors, you know, this year. You know, that sometimes when God is calling you guys to do something, he is sending you to a person that can be reached by you. But and if you don't go, not only will you miss your blessing in the journey of going, they may miss the, the thing that they needed to sustain. So I'm always really careful and conscious when God tells me to do something. So my faith is everything to me. Um, He has never failed me. Every time I thought we were going to go under, every time we've been under attack, you know, we've had horrible things happen. My son has been on life support. I mean, my husband's been, we've had major things happen. But every time God will heal, restore, make new. And then he always adds on a little blessing. So I'm 
fully confident that if I succeed or fail, it's his fault. So I take the pressure off of me. <laughs> it's not my business. Y'all standing on business. I'm standing on kingdom business. Mm, so mm. whatever he say do, that's what I do. And then I expect for him to give the increase, the blessing, the way he chooses to give it to me. We standing on kingdom business kingdom in 2024. Business. So family, I, I, you know, people see you <laughs> and they're like, well, how do you balance it? Because I'm, I'm single and I'll be like, I don't know how this is going. We're going to juggle all these things. So how do you pri- prioritize your family while you're building an empire and, and generational wealth and a legacy for them? Yeah. So our youngest is now 16. I literally don't believe in perfect attendance. So she's <laughs> on tour with me now. Um, <laughs> we got her. I we, love it. We got her work as long as she does what she's supposed to do. Um, so I try to make it to be inclusive. Like my life is not like, oh, this is my job and that's my family. It's really interwoven. My children work within the business. They get royalties and they understand that if they don't work, there's nothing for them to have. They also understand my money ain't their money yet. So we all have to have a part. When I say we party, um, Suge, as, as we affectionately call my husband, we throw Club Smith on Fridays. We dance. We cook together. Um, even my older kids. I mean, everybody will come and stay at the house. So there's not like a big divide between like work and fun and family. We kind of do it together. And then there are sometimes we just to cut off work altogether and we'll travel together or just be at home together. But we don't try to exclude them. If they want to come to what I'm doing, They're going to come. So don't invite me if my family is not welcome because, you know, that's a big part of who I am. Incorporating family into even my parents. Yeah. Me and my parents went up. My sister just got married and we went, me and my husband and my parents, we went on the honeymoon with her. Now we weren't in their room, but (laughs) (laughs) it's just our family has always found a way to make those special moments for everybody. I love it. I love it. Like you can create what you want this to look like. Yeah, your rules. You create the rules. And I love that part about, you know, the non-perfect attendance. Like, both of us, you know, what our backgrounds in education. Mm -mm. It's a new way of doing things. Exactly. love it. Exactly. And even sometimes your kids need to be, I believe in public education, but sometimes... If a kid needs to be healed or needs Mm. something special, take that kid out of homeschooling for six months. Get them on the right track. A lot of times we expect the system to do things with our kids, but they don't love our kids the way we love our kids. I'm not saying the school system is bad. I had a friend. She took her daughter out of school for a year just because her daughter was just having some confidence issues. Mm. And she was a teacher, too. And I would just see them go to the museum. And she took math classes at the college. And she they started a business. And they worked on her health. And she, when she went back to school, she went back to school a whole different child. So just think about what your kids need. Our kids are all different. And they try us on different levels. Mm. And... What works for one kid doesn't necessarily work for, for another kid. So um, be very cognizant of what your kids need from you because you just don't have them that long. Mm. You know, they grow up so fast. You think, oh, my God, I can't wait till they get older. And then as they start moving, you're like, man, I wish I would have had more time or I wish I would have taught them this. I mean, we have financial classes. They, they help us flip the houses. Everybody's going to work, but also everybody's going to reap the reward. I love it. I heard you have a free gift for our people. Tell us a little bit more about it. Absolutely. So I believe that you can get a lot done. And I also believe you can really revolutionize and change your life in 100 days. So I have a gift. It's called 100 Days Better. It will give you like a little mini course of how I do the 10 day sprints and how I live my life in 100 day cycles. And so this is how I get a lot done. But it's also how I spend about 60 days traveling, resting, being on the beach, doing all those great things as well. It's a really good balance. And I wanted to give it as a gift to you, not so you can just put it in your inbox. I want you to open it. I want you to apply it. So the next time we talk, you can tell me how you got 100 days better. 100 days better planner, her whole 100 days productivity experience, her 100 day sprint, her 10 day sprints. Listen, (laughs) Brandy is the queen of productivity. And they just have to go to 100daysbetterclub.com and you can download it for free. 100daysbetterclub.com and we'll make sure that we have that in the show notes for you. What is next for you? You know, besides getting through the tour, looking off, like in the future, besides really wanting to do the bank, um, we're really pushing hard for, you know, building communities and buying more acreage and, you know, and doing all the things that we love, traveling the world. And then I don't know, God hasn't whispered what's next next. 
Mm. <laughs> so when he tells me, I'll be sure to put you on speed dial because I'm sure you're going to have a part of it. But I would love to be a godmother soon. You heard it here first. No, <laughs> you didn't hear anything here first, okay? I am not with child. That's going to be my baby mama, y'all. I can't wait to have a god baby. I'm, I'm looking forward to it in the future when when God sends me that whisper. Okay, we, waiting for we will the, wait. I'm, I'm waiting for the whisper. We will wait. Introduce yourself in the, in the microphone, look at your camera, and tell us why your brand's a big deal. Hey, guys, I'm Brandy Wood-Smith, the owner and founder of Imagine Me Academy and Child Care Millionaires. And the reason why my brand is a big deal is because it's founded on the principles that if I help people get what they need, I'll get everything that I want. So that's why my brand's a big deal. And your brand's a big deal, too. So thank you so much, beautiful people, <laughs> for being here with myself and Brandy Wood-Smith. Thank you so much. I had a great time. Fabulous and amazing and phenomenal. You <laughs> helped so many people and you've been just like I said, uh, just a godsend in my life. So I want to bring you phenomenal people. I hope you have a, a great day. Wait, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode and we'll see you in the next episode. Beautiful people. Peace out.